Hi, I'm Dr. Tala, a board certified neonatologist, and today we are covering the NICU from A to Z, or Z, if you're living anywhere else in the world. I originally wrote this for our newsletter, Neonatal Nuggets, that we send out every couple of weeks. So sign up for that if you want like the PDF summaries of the videos and other stuff that we randomly talk about in the newsletter. But I enjoyed writing this so much that we figured we'd make a video out of it. So here it goes. Let's start with A. A is for alarms, or rather the soundtrack to our lives. Whoever came up with the term alarm fatigue needs to basically be given a massive award. Although, much like Pavlov and his dog, it seems so obvious now. I mean, do you even work in the NICU if weird beeping outside the hospital doesn't give you kind of like even a little bit of a jolt? Maybe a high-pitched ringing in the grocery store. It must be a code, an L&D. Or an ominous whistling sound when you turn on your hairdryer. Maybe the jet tubing is disconnected. And on it goes, alarms affecting us both inside the NICU as well as outside the NICU. B. B is for breast milk. Yes, all that pumping is a full-time job for NICU mothers, but how special is breast milk? Magical effects on neck, BPD, eye drainage, diaper rashes, everything. In fact, the only time we aren't crazy about breast milk is when a well-meaning mother brings us a tray of homemade cookies and then after we've eaten a couple, she casually mentions her secret ingredient. This really has happened. C is for caffeine. Now imagine my best Oprah impression here and I'm really bad at impressions, but you get caffeine and you get caffeine and I get caffeine. And if you want to know why caffeine is so special, go read one of our previous newsletters on caffeine. D is for documentation or the bane of our existence, because as we all know, if you didn't write it down, then it didn't happen. I would say the worst is when the whole system is on downtime and then we have to resort to paper charting like we did in the olden days or basically the 2000s. And that's probably the only time we actually miss the EMR. I actually may have to retire earlier than anticipated because, because I will have literally run out of combinations of letters and numbers and special characters to come up with new passwords. E is for events, as in what should we actually consider an event? The night nurse documented 17 events, but the day nurse told us the baby always does that. They were all short and self-resolved and proceeded to document none. Did the events happen during feeds, during the ROP exam, during that night when Hurricane Harvey was battering down the windows? F is for frenulum. Look, we can agree that it may not be the loosest tongue ever, but surely not Every single baby is tongue-tied. How did the human race possibly survive with this range of pandemic of ankyloglossia? Honestly, all of this overdiagnosing is probably taking away from the neonates who really could do with a quick clip of their frenulum. G is for gentamicin, one of our favorite drugs. And when we can give it, we can ask each other questions all day long like, Shall we bother getting the trough if we're only treating for five days? Or wait, are we not using Neofax dosing? Or can we just send a level with the regular labs? H is for hypertension. So really, when do we consider a blood pressure to be low? Mean below gestational age, mean below 30, mean really low and a four second cap refill time and no urine output for 10 hours? And then how do we treat it? We want an echo, but Lord knows if we order it stat, we need the result in 30 minutes or the entire hospital will go to hell in a handbasket. We're all learning dopamine is bad, but are you ready to go head to head with a pharmacist at two in the morning about the norepi drip that we want? Probably not. I is for I over T ratio. We all calculate it and we all follow it, even though deep down we know it's probably not that helpful. J is for joint commission. Look, it's not like we're slathering ourselves in bodily fluids and throwing epic food fights in the NICU, but somehow, somehow, when we know they're coming, we all suddenly feel super guilty. Can I still drink water? What about if it has a lid on it? What if I'm in the office? 
What if I'm in my car and I'm not even working that day? K is for knocked up. Lots of women work in the NICU, so obviously there's lots of happy pregnancy news. But how do we give pregnant working mummies some relief during grueling shifts? How do we celebrate each individual so that they all get to feel special? And how do we staff night shift while everybody and their sister is on maternity leave? L is for L and D. Well, this is a bit of a love-hate relationship, isn't it? They're so skilled, communicative, and kind, and we love them. And then that one time they delivered two super sick babies within 30 seconds of each other, or they didn't know that the mother had been followed by MFM for the suspected craniosynostosis, and then suddenly we're fuming at them again. M is for main OR, as in the C-section is in the main OR. This is never good. First, how do we get there again? Second, why is it in the bowels of the hospital over 6,000 steps away? And then once we're there, nothing is set up. Or it was set up three days ago when they first told us about the accreta. Now, where's the blended oxygen? Is there suction? Do we have to wear that? And where did all these people come from? And why is it 47 degrees Fahrenheit in here? N, neck. No, this is the real bane of our existence. A horrible, horrible disease that takes away our best patients. We are so thankful to the neck society who have made massive strides in building a world without neck. O is for oxygen. We love it. It saves lives. 100% oxygen for everyone. PPHN, prematurity, any pneumothorax. But wait! ROP and BPD, we hate oxygen, aim for SATs in the 80s. But wait, neck and mortality. We love some oxygen, just make sure the baby SATs stay at 92% all the time. Go back and see alarm fatigue. P is for a PDA. We should never close these, except for when we should always close these. Q is for quads. We know they're out there because the OB team told us about them soon after the mother peed on the stick. Every week we get the update. Babies are growing well, no issues with mama. We're at 22, then 26, and then 28 weeks. Phew. Now the littlest one has stopped growing and the mother's blood pressure is rising. And you know, you just know that the babies are waiting for you to be on call before they make an appearance. R is for radiologists. We love you. We really do. We never would have caught the cerebellar hemorrhage, the dilated renal pelvis, all that extra rib, etc., etc. But why do you always manage to call about the pneumothorax at the exact moment that we're gowned up and ready to insert the chest tube? S is for syphilis. Everyone has syphilis. You watching this right now may very well have latent syphilis or even active syphilis. Do you have a weird bump or a rash? It's probably syphilis. Don't even pass go, just collect some penicillin and convince your partner that they need it too. T is for TPN. Send the labs at 6 a.m. to get the results at 8 a.m. to write the TPN by noon to hang the TPN by night shift. What could possibly go wrong? U is for umbilical lines. I mean, the UVC is making the curve, so technically it's probably heading towards the IVC. Maybe we can eke out another 24 hours. V is for viscera. Have you ever used these? I'm not sure how they got by hospital bylaws. They're basically walkie-talkies from a bygone era. I mean, hipper be damned. X is for x-ray. This is always fun, especially if you've just put in lines and you're still gowned up and the night tech is stuck in the ER. Then after you reposition the lines, you get to play the, are you gonna make me put in another x-ray order game? Y is for Y-in. Is it Y-in or is it T-in? Is the difference just in the stopcock thingy? And Z or Z is for zebra. You know the saying in medicine, if you hear trotting outside your window, and by the way, an important aside here, who actually hears trotting outside their window? Are we all living in Pride and Prejudice? Anyway, if you hear trotting outside your window, then assume it's a horse and not a zebra. Unless, of course, you work in a children's hospital or a referral center. And then you can assume that all constipation is Hirschsprung's, all respiratory failure is ACD, 
and that weird birthmark is definitely tuberous sclerosis. All right, that was my A to Z. I hope you enjoyed it.